You're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom with Gianluca Zanna on Guerrilla Media Network. Hi everybody, this is Luca Zanna. Welcome to the second hour of Love, Guns and Freedom on KTOX 1340 AM and on Guerrilla Media Network. Don't forget, you can also go to the website www.lovegunsfreedom.com. You know very well at this point, after almost 15 months doing this show, the second hour, it is about uh, guns, but not just guns and training like we will do, by the way, during the second part of the second hour. We also talk about gun rights and also how to exercise our rights and also what really we are losing every day. And as I said many times, rights are like muscles. Or we use them or we lose them. And uh, I know, sometimes it's a sacrifice, it's a little risky, but guess what? This is exactly where we are, the way we are right now, because unfortunately we let it go for too long. And I really tell you something, you know, I watched a video yesterday on YouTube, a friend of mine, Cope Reynolds, that is also a guest of the show many times, uh, he sent this video out about a family. You know, it wasn't just a man, it wasn't just a father. There was also a mother, and there was also a daughter. And I was uh, so moved by this family together exercising their rights exactly it was the second amendment right on what supposed to be but uh, i don't think it was federal property in washington state but i don't want to say things that they're not accurate because i have here the the real man the guy uh, his name is anthony bosworth anthony are you there I am. Nice to meet you, Anthony. Please, uh, I know a little bit about you, um, but uh, I would like you to introduce yourself, your background, uh, where you're from, exactly, also where you're located right now, and uh, tell us a little bit about you before we go exactly what happened uh, in this Washington federal property parking lot. Okay. Uh, well, I'm a native to Idaho. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, that's actually where I first met Cope Reynolds, uh, Okay. several years ago. Okay. Um, I moved to Washington State uh, in my late teens, and I joined the military up here. Uh, so I've been in Washington State for uh, about 25 years, I believe. Okay. Uh, um, so you're, where do you live exactly in Washington State? Which town or which city? Uh, Yakima, Washington. Okay. So, and are you a veteran? Are you a retired veteran? I mean, are you active duty soldier or are you a veteran right now? I, I am a disabled uh, retired veteran, yes. Okay, so you're now taking care of your family. And uh, I really, I, I read a little bit about you. I was doing some little research. I know that you're kind of uh, active exercising in your rights, in our rights. And uh, tell us a little bit, you know, you know, this is not the first time that uh, you do something like that, uh, according to what I know. And then we will go exactly what happened uh, in front of this federal building or whatever it is. Uh, what do you do normally? I mean, I know that uh, Washington, right now, Washington State is under attack, especially after the latest pieces of legislation. Uh, do you have a group? Uh, do you work with other people? What exactly you do? Well, let me uh, take you back a little bit and give you a little bit of background history of how I got started in this. Please, uh, go ahead. While I was deployed to Iraq, while I was deployed to Iraq, uh, there was this thing that came out over the, the wire while we were over there that the veterans would be losing their gun rights uh, when we returned home. Mm -hmm. uh, they said that we'd be losing them because we showed the ability to kill. Mm. That's when I, it really started clicking in my mind that something was wrong. Uh, by the way, I was probably about 28, 29 when that happened. Um, and I really got concerned about it. So when... I returned back to the States, people would ask me, or they'd say to me, uh, thank you for your service, what can we do uh, to show our gratitude? And my response was always the same to the people, stand up for your rights here at home while we're over there defending them overseas. Okay. It's always been that. Well, uh, right after I returned home, I mean less than a month after I returned home, the government called for troops that were uh, had the ability to deal with armed ci citizens to deploy to Katrina. Wow. Uh, I was having a hard time readjusting to being back to civilian life, uh, so I volunteered to go. Mm. While I was in uh, Katrina, uh, we started policing the streets as law enforcement, but in military uniform with military weapons. And I'd become very convicted. I was very uh, 
uh, I grew very ashamed of myself for what we were doing over there. And while over there, I changed my personal mission there against the military's orders, and I started helping people. Wow. And uh, instead of policing them, and that's the moment it changed for me. I vowed from that day forward I would never participate in the military police in our own streets. Uh, that was my point of conviction. Wow. Uh, from, after that, uh, I got out of the military and uh, become active. Uh, in the political arena, and uh, there come up a thing about constitutional sheriffs. And so me and a group of people got together, and we wondered about our local sheriff. So in five days, me and a, a friend of mine, we, we took 250 armed civilians peacefully down to our sheriff's office and demanded a uh, conversation with him, mm -hmm. which he accepted. Uh, we let him know that we were here, that we did this in five days. If we needed to, we could do it way bigger. And uh, he was surprised. But that's kind of how I come out in the, the, the public's eye is over that. And then uh, we got involved doing the I Am Will Not Comply rallies in, in Olympia. Uh, that kind of stuff. I actually run for sheriff of Yakima County this following year, or uh, this last year. Okay. Uh, changed the whole sheriff race. Uh, I run on a, a constitutional platform. Uh, you know, the citizens should have the right. The citizens should be the ones calling the shots. Our sheriffs should be citizen sheriffs, not law enforcement, because the sheriffs need to understand where the citizens are coming from. Law enforcement should be the employees of a citizen. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of because I've never been law enforcement. And so I run as a citizen, uh, not law enforcement. Yes. And we really stirred up the race. Got people woke up. Yes. Uh, that's really important. I, I have a couple of questions, if you don't mind, Anthony. First of all, you know, when you were in the army, any special, um, you know, you were infantry, what exactly, what was your expertise? What was your branch? Uh, I had several. Uh, my combat experience uh, was uh, 19 uh, Delta Scout. Uh, I was field intelligence. Uh, I uh, forward observer type stuff. Okay. And when you got deployed in Katrina, you were pretty much under military control. You were still in the army, correct? Officially, you weren't just a contractor. Correct. So you were pretty much a deployment correct. of a, a military force, and there was even National Guard. I think you were exactly under the army, so just to be sure I got it right. Yes, I, I, was actually, I was actually in the National Guard at that time, Okay. but I was active duty uh, National Guard. I was activated uh and uh, into the active duty for that deployment. And everybody knows now because, you know, pre before people couldn't believe it, but after the videos, the evidence, even on mainstream news, like on Fox News, when we saw these uh, National Guard uh, soldiers, you know, um, they were pretty much in denial, or at least many of them that say, I can't believe it's happening here. You know, I don't want to do this, but they were doing it. And uh, you, you know what happened? I mean, they were breaking into people's homes and disarming them. What was exactly was your mission? I mean, when they give you the orders, go out, what are you supposed to do? I mean, what was the order to, when you had to go out? Helping people, uh, I don't know, stopping uh, bad people, or just uh, confiscating guns? What exactly was on your book? Our initial orders when we got down there was uh, a security force just to move the civilians out of uh, their their neighborhoods, keep them out, mm -hmm. uh, and to keep the peace. Okay. Uh, it quickly turned into those soldiers of us that were awake and was paying attention to what was going on. We realized the people we needed to be watching was law enforcement. They were the biggest criminal element down there. And so uh, wow. uh, that's what we ended up doing, but we did that on our own. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't an order. Uh uh, they just happened to be the criminal element that we watched. Um, pretty much, uh, we were property uh, guards. Uh, we patrolled the streets uh, day and night. Uh, they would shift us around uh, periodically because we'd start building rapport and relationships with the locals, and the military would actually transplant us in different places quite often, so we couldn't build those relations. I understand. And question, did you ever receive the direct order, let's say, now it's time to confiscate guns, like we've seen on watch on TV. They were doing it uh, live on Fox News. Did you have a, that or, that order ever was given to you? Yes, the order was given that if we seen civilians with guns, we were to take the guns. Yes. No matter if they were good people, just trying to mind their business in their home, maybe on, in their their side of their fence, that would be still a threat for you guys. Or at least it was part of the order, I guess. 
Wow. Correct. Uh, our order, our orders was as long as they weren't law enforcement and they were Americans with guns, we were to take their guns. And did you ever get uh, any type of uh, threat or direct fire from any civilian during that time that you were there? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, the only weapon fire we ever know, uh, noticed from civilians is stranded civilians using weapons to draw attention to themselves in a call for help. Oh, wow. Interesting. And we've seen, we've seen many times that that was misunderstood as being fired upon mm -hmm. when it clearly was not. It was, uh, they were distraught. They were, they were looking for help and they'd use weapons fired to draw attention to themselves. Interesting. So you see that the American people, the average American person, you know, I'm sure they're also bad people. They were trying to profit and they were trying to use the situation of, of, of mayhem and chaos. But the average American person with a gun it wasn't a threat. The threat was probably this uh, corrupted, uh, some of the police force that we know they've been arrested, they convicted. They were pretty much, uh, you know, profiting and doing their dirty job. So this is interesting because in all this big mess, thousands and thousands of uh, law-abiding citizens, citizens with, with guns, even, of course, you were just, you know, living through a small part of the society. You didn't go through everywhere, but, you know, you never really had any type of uh, direct fire or physical harm uh, from any civilian, any citizen. Now, let's go back to what happened on this YouTube because I, get, I will post, I'll post, by the way, my YouTube also on the website, www.lovegunsfreedom.com. It's like about uh, five minutes. This, according to the video, confirm me when happened, please. It was February the 25th or the 24th. When happened? Uh, this event in front of the did, federal building, when did you record that? When it was happening? This, uh, that was recorded. Uh, it, it happened on the 25th. So yesterday's fresh. This is a real fresh video. And first of all, tell us exactly the location. Which town or which city is this one? And what is this building? It was the federal building in Spokane, Washington, on the east side of our state. Okay. And... Uh, who are the, 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 the subjects in this uh, sort of adventure? I, I saw you, correct me if I'm wrong, there is your lady, I hear your voice, and also there is your daughter, correct? Correct, and my son. And your son. So it's all your family. Sorry, I miss your son. And uh, tell us exactly why did you want to go there, what you were trying to do, what exactly was your purpose? I mean, explain a little bit your planning of this operation. Okay. Uh, as a lot of people up here... Uh, can see we've been uh, raising a lot of uh, uh, havoc here in the state here uh, over gun rights. We've been uh, waking people up, and uh, we've got the uh, attention of a lot of other groups, uh, constitutional groups, and one of their uh, groups contacted me. It was actually the Tenth Amendment group up here and wanted to know if uh, we'd participate and support them in uh, their endeavors. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was pretty quick. We didn't have time to uh, to plan. It was actually a day before, and we've been pushing for uh, the constitutional groups to work together. So, we, of course, we accepted uh, it, that we'd come over and support them. Uh, what was what was happening is there's actually a federal case going on in Washington State right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the Kettle Falls Five. Uh, they they were growing some marijuana, mm -hmm. and uh, keep in mind that. Uh, Marijuana is legal in Washington State. Mm -hmm. And so they were going to marijuana, and they found a muzzle loader rifle, a black powder rifle, in the homes of one of these five people. Oh, my gosh. And the feds are claiming <laughs> that this muzzle loader yeah. is proof that these guys were, gun run or, uh, were uh, dark drug runners. Wow. It's They're afraid a of a muzzle loader. Antique. Wow. Yeah, muzzle loader, uh, black powder. Yeah. But that's the evidence the federal government is using to, uh, to convict these people that mm -hmm. they were drug runners. And the Tenth Amendment Center is there supporting this group uh, because that's a Tenth Amendment issue. We we legally can have marijuana in this state, and yet the federal government is prosecuting members of this state for that offense. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly an issue with the Tenth Amendment. And so we were there supporting the Tenth Amendment uh, group uh, is why we were there. We actually arrived uh, a little bit ahead of time yeah. on the federal grounds there. They're, they've got this great big plaza on the corner street, mm -hmm. and it's it's very apparent that it's a public plaza, that they designed it for the public to come in, sit down, and, you know, talk on your phone, do your laptop stuff, you mm -hmm. know, uh, in the breaks throughout the day. It's a, it's a very public. There's no fence. Uh, there's no barriers. 
Right. And I didn't see any sign. Did yeah. you see any sign? I didn't see any sign, according from the video, of course, that says uh, no guns allowed. Was there any sign there? Well, here, here's the beautiful part about it. Mm -hmm. The sign, the, the only sign in the courtyard yeah. uh, about weapons. And you hear people say there wasn't a sign. I'm here to tell you there was. Mm -hmm. There was a great big sign about three foot by three foot in brass. Mm -hmm. that enshrined the Bill of Rights. Wow. Interesting. That was, that was the sign. <laughs> the arrest actually happened 15 foot from that shrine. Wow. This is almost poetic. I mean, it's very sad, but it's almost so good because it is something, it shows really where we are as a republic that pretty much is dying every day more and more. And I see these uh, drones, these zombies, you know, they barely can walk with all their... It seems like they're going to uh, uh, fight the Martians. I mean, the way they are dressed and they barely can even... I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, fending them because it's really true. I mean, these people, they must have an acute level of a room temperature and they have such a ego of, of, of a frustration and repression. Maybe their wife beat them up every day and they have to play the Rambo's part and they look very pathetic, in my opinion. I mean, seriously, because... To understand, first of all, you were there with your family. I'll tell you, it broke my heart. I saw your daughter with a little, um, I think she has a 22, or a nice little pink rifle pr professional. She yeah, she held uh, with a sling, uh, correct. You were obeying your state laws. Correct. You know, you're carrying your, I don't know if it's an AK or a Sega. It looks like, what you, what you were carrying there that day? What you had, a Sega or an I was, AK? I was carrying an AK-47. An AK-47, was it a 10 rounds mag you had? It looks like a... Say that one more time. Was it 10 rounds magazine? Uh, yes, just yeah. a little magazine. More yeah. comfortable to carry that way on yeah, my back. Yeah, you were doing a you know, nice... And I deliberately carried it that way, so... I saw so that... It was inaccessible to me, so it, exactly. it was definitely looked like it was safe. was super safe. It was uh, completely according to... Um, if I had to look also from the Arizona laws point of view, you were doing exactly everything by the book. I don't know exactly your state law, but I think I'm sure you were, you know what you were doing. So it was you, your wife, I could see your daughter. I mean, it was like a family, okay, that you were just trying to exercise your rights. As you said, in front of the Bill of Rights in Brass, there was no sign, according to the evidence that I have, that state, or they stated that there was uh, no guns allowed on their holy ground. I mean, I can't believe it. This is supposed to be the federal government with the Bill of Rights, pretty much supposed to be federal if we still had the republic and you know very well now every time you go in some federal holy ground it seems like we are going to mars okay or we're going to some other country pretty much it's no more america and we have no more rights pretty much but anyway the, the, the sad thing that they come to you and they start to ask ask you questions and uh, please go more into details because i know that your lady was giving some sort of identification and then out of the blue the marshal comes out tell us more details what happened okay uh so we were standing there and then we were approached by a security guard uh mm -hmm. a couple of them one was uh very friendly and we were talking about gun rights and the second amendment uh second one approached us and told us we couldn't be on federal ground and uh, I asked her uh, where she got that from. Yeah. And she goes, well, that's just the law. And I told her, well, I know the law. And Which that's law? That's incorrect. Yeah. And she, and she immediately radioed the, the federal marshals. Yeah, we have one of them. Doesn't, yeah, no. He doesn't want to believe that, uh, not even believe. They just because they tell you there is a law, show me the law. I want to comply with the law. Which law am I breaking? I mean, what's wrong with that? So you didn't give the right answer. You weren't a perfect slave. You were one of them that could see through their BS, and they called the federal Bonnie Fife Marshal, that he looks like an idiot, by the way. This is my opinion. But uh, uh, tell us, what happened? What did the federal marshal tell you, told you? Okay. Uh, just, just to clear it up a little bit, Yeah. Uh, the first two guys on site yes. were actually uh, Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. Yes, they look like they, 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 their badge says Homeland Security, the new Gestapo police. Go ahead. Correct. Go ahead. And uh, what happened uh, then? And I'm engaging... I'm engaging in conversation with him about my ID mm -hmm. uh, and about the law. Uh, he misquotes the law. I correct him on the verbiage of the law mm -hmm. that it's not on federal property, it's in a federal facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, him and I engage in a conversation. He starts to calm down because he was pretty upset when he first got there. Yeah. He starts to calm down. Uh, we're actually having a very uh, quiet uh, 
peaceful conversation, uh, the second Homeland Security guy shows up, and from my point of view, I only see those two. I was unaware of being completely surrounded behind me yeah. by them because yes. uh, I hadn't turned yet. Uh, we're discussing about federal land and property, and uh, so I asked the question, well, a reasonable person would not know where state land and federal land ends and starts here because there's no marking. Exactly. It's clearly a public area. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to get him to show me where the public uh, or where the state land and the federal land starts and stops, which he kept saying sidewalk. Well, the whole thing is a sidewalk. There's different paths everywhere. Uh, and I'm trying to get him to show me exactly where he's talking about so we could apply with his request, even mm -hmm. though I know he was wrong. Yeah. And uh, by then, the, the little guy shows up and he was actually. The, the federal marshal. Yes. And he comes up immediately aggressive, uh, seeing that I'm already in a conversation with these two Homeland Security guys, which are remaining calm. Mm -hmm. And he's being very aggressive in, I mean, poking at me over it. And uh, so I continue, and I don't know who he is. He's playing clothes. He has no badge on. He, there's nothing to identify himself. He failed to identify himself. Uh, as far as I knew, he was a civilian. So uh, I continually to engage in the conversation I'm already having with Homeland Security guys. Mm -hmm. Well, this upsets this guy. And he comes over and says, if I don't leave, I'll be arrested. And, of course, I engage him also and say, well, what for? Yeah. And he said, for being on federal land. Wow. And uh, cool. I, I basically state to him, the law doesn't state that. And I corrected him also. I go back to discussing the property line with the Homeland Security guy and the marshal walked around to my left side and I was assuming he was just taking a different position, but he reached out and he, he took me by the hand and I was assuming he was moving my hand so he could look at the sidearm I was carrying, which I was carrying a Glock, thanks to Cope, by the way. Uh, and so I just nonchalantly moved my hand so he could look at the pistol and then uh, he grabbed me by the hand and twisted it behind my back oh my and in God. doing so I had a cigarette in my hand. Oh my God. And he smashed the cigarette between his hand and my hand and he, he was starting to get burnt. Uh, cause, you know, I'm a welder by trade, so I've got calluses, so the heat isn't hurting me as bad. But I knew he probably was feeling it, so I tried to help him. And I said, hey, let go of my hand. I have a cigarette there. You're getting burnt. Oh and so God. I pulled my hand away from me, and then I dropped the cigarette. Oh, my God. Well, then he proceeded to say I was resisting, and I said, I'm not resisting. I was just trying to get the cigarette out of my hand. And uh, wow. then the, the Homeland Security guy said, well, well, let's take his rifle off his back. And so I start taking... Uh, orders from the Homeland Security guy, you know, he said, move your arm so I can get this rifle off your back. So I, I'm proceeding to move my hand out to the side so he can get the sling off. Mm -hmm. And in the doing so, the federal marshal's twisting my wrist and trying to put it back behind me. The, the Homeland Security guy on the other side is telling him, hey, relax a little bit. Let him move his arm so I can get this rifle. Yeah. Well, the two of them start arguing. Wow. And they're jerking my, my arm back and forth, twisting it around. Jesus. Uh, they finally, or, uh, the federal marshal got a cuff on my loose hand uh, at that point, or on the hand that was towards in my left hand, uh, but he had yet to get the other hand cuffed. And so the Homeland Security guy is still trying to get this rifle off my back over this cuff. And uh, finally, I just let him take my hand and cuff it to the other hand, and then they just took the strap apart to get the rifle. I see that. But they were confused. They were fighting us. They were fighting amongst each other. Yeah, I see and the that. Whole time I'm telling them both, hey, you guys, you guys need to calm down. You know, <laughs> I'm not resisting. No one's getting hurt here. You guys wow. are starting to get amped up. Relax a little bit here. This is insane. And, uh, I spent 90% of my time not defending myself, but trying to get them uh, to quit fighting each other sure. and quit getting so amped up. Yeah. And uh, I uh, want to say, everybody, you got to watch this video because this is, uh, if it wasn't so serious, it would be comical, seriously. These people, they cannot even tie their shoes, you know, and think at the same time, seriously. And the sad thing, you know, you weren't resisting anything. You were the, the, the most peaceful person I, I may ever meet, okay, probably in that situation. And not only that, I want to give you really credit. You are super cool because when you have somebody that does even identify themselves and start to put their hands towards my gun, you know, the first instinct say, what are you doing? Are you reaching out for my gun? I mean, you were very, very super cool and you kept it very calm and, and under control. Because I'm telling you, these people, and more important, your lady, she has a lot of, of, of strength and courage because she didn't stop recording, kept recording. They were trying to push her away, I saw that. But the point, you had them all on video. 
and think about it. These are like the scum of the scum. Unfortunately, it's true. There are also some good people among them, but these people, this bunch that I see, especially the marshal that I think really has a mental problem, in my opinion, beside that is uh, some compl complex of inferiority. Maybe this wife beat him up that he has to try to do this sneaky attack to get you, like, try to, you were even, you were talking, you know, and, and, and they can even decide who's going to get your rifle. And more important, how dare him try to say that you were resisting arrest? Uh, even just to think that. Think about how much they would have used against you if you were in a dark alley. They probably first they would have tased you, beat you up, and then tell them to the world that you were resisting arrest. So it's, it's, uh, I'm glad that everything went okay. So you got arrested. What happened? Did you go where? Where did you well, look up? Well, well, let me throw this part in here a little bit uh, before we move on real quick. Yes. That little Marshall, the one with the uh, little man syndrome, uh -huh. all the way in there once we got away from the camera, Yeah. he was actually taking one of the cuffs behind me where he was hiding where the camera couldn't see Yeah. Uh, because he was standing in the way. And he was taking that one cuff and he was twisting just that one cuff sideways and almost to the point of dislocating my wrist. Wow. And I tell him, hey, calm down. There's no reason to try to put me in pain. I'm not resisting. I'm walking. Oh, he was doing intention. He, was, he wanted to provoke you in reaction. He wanted to provoke you in, in, to fight back, just to say, I'm hurting. Oh, yeah. And boom. Yeah, it, it wasn't probably. He was definitely yes. trying to provoke me into violence. He was definitely trying to get me to react wow. so they could do something more. And... Uh, this, had, this went on all the way to the fourth floor of the federal building. Mm -hmm. And I've been constantly doing that. Uh, like when they take me into the hallway and they'll get ready to open an elevator or face a door, they get ready to go through the door, they would have me face a wall. And when he would tell me to face a wall, he would shove me into it instead of, I mean, I'd turn to face the wall and then he'd give me a little shove to slam my uh, face into the wall, yeah. you know, by, by him holding my cuss. Just being overly aggressive, not hurting me, but, you know, just trying to manhandle me. Yes. And uh, I find, I find, you know, I didn't get upset. I remained cool. You know, to be all the way through it. But I, I felt that the need that, okay, there's, time, there's a time that I need to, uh, you know, to speak to him on this subject. Yes. And I finally turned to him and I said, you need to understand something. I spent 18 months in Iraq. There ain't nothing you can do to upset me. There just isn't. I know what you're doing. I'm on to you. I'm going to be cold as an ice cube. And it, it upset him that he... He yeah. couldn't upset me. Yes. And so, no. you know, he was taught me all the way. Uh, uh, the funny thing is, is, if you watch the video real closely, you'll see me talking to one of the marshals. I yeah. actually had to get the marshals to unload because they kept pulling my Glock out yeah. and, and playing with it. And I told him, hey, that's loaded. You need to un drop the mag yeah. and you need to clear that chamber. Yeah, <laughs> they don't even and probably know so that. So I had to instruct yeah. the marshals through unloading oh and clearing my weapon. Oh, my God. I didn't notice the AK yet because somebody else had it. When we got in the building, they're flagging everybody with my AK. And I look over and I see the mag still in it. Oh so I had to God. tell the other marshals, you need to drop that magazine now and clear that chamber. Wow. This is a really, I mean. They I'm had no idea. This is very serious. These people are supposed to be the one to defend us and keep us safe, okay? Just for the record. They can even keep themselves safe, muzzling each other and us. Now, uh, you, where did you lock you up? I mean, you went in a room. I was like, you were uncuffed. Un How long all this drama last, you know, when you were in this federal building, this holy ground? They ended up taking me to the, to the fourth floor, okay. and uh, they took me into a detainment area. Uh, and then they put me in a room. This room was 13 feet by 13 feet. I could actually give you the dimensions of this room because I paced it so many times. Wow. Um, and inside this room is a, cage, a steel cage. They took me into a steel locked room and put me in a steel cage inside this room. Like an animal. Uh, you know, yeah, exactly. Uh, and there were three cameras on me at all times. Uh, then they left me in the room. There, I mean... There was lights in the room, but there was nothing else. I mean, it's all stainless steel room. Uh, there was a stainless steel toilet in there. Um, immediately, uh, I noticed there was no toilet paper. And so just being normal me, I picked up the empty roll of toilet paper, and I held it up to the camera, mm -hmm. and I spoke to the camera, and I said, I pay you enough tax dollars, you can at least give me some toilet paper. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> that went on. They actually didn't give me toilet paper for four, until four hours into it. Wow. They didn't, wouldn't give me toilet paper. And when they would come in, I'd ask for it. Hey, where's my roll of toilet paper? They wouldn't give it to me. So you got four, at least four uh, hours in this, room, in this room. More than four hours you were there, right? So far. 
Yes, so far. And uh, what are the uh, charges, first of all? To put you in, uh, did you ask, am I under arrest? I mean, what, what exactly? They just can't kidnap you now? I know that under the National Defense Authorization Act, pretty much they can lock you up and put you in a box and ship you maybe in some, you know, rendition jail, maybe in Egypt or whatever. You disappear. We know that. This is the law, guys, by the way. I remind you, I've been saying this so many times the last year or so. We are living right now in America before pre-Magna Carta. We have no more due process. We are pretty much under National Defense Authorization Act. Any one of us, just because suspected to be terrorist, and we know very well the definition of terrorist now, I don't want to repeat you again, and you know very well the veterans on top of the list as a potential domestic terrorist, you can be kidnapped, undefinitely detained, and pretty much not have access to due process, judge, lawyers, nothing. You're gone. So... Right now, did they ask you, did they say, by the way, you are under arrest and these are the charges? Did they tell you anything like that? You, you, you're going to love this, Luca. Go ahead. Um, I actually, actually asked them twice before entering the building, before they uh, took me into the building, mm -hmm. two questions. Am I under arrest? I need to uh, call my attorney. Mm -hmm. They just chuckled at me. Uh, that's all. Uh, really? Wow. When they put me in the cage... Uh, I, again, before I actually breached the door, the, the second door into the cage, yeah. uh, I, uh, I said, I want to talk to my attorney now. And the marshal laughed at me and said, you don't get an attorney. Attorneys are for Hollywood. Really? We don't have to give you an attorney. Oh, my God. And I said, well, we'll see about that. At that point, mind you, now I started to worry. Yeah. Uh, before, it's just a process. Yeah. When he said that I didn't get an attorney, instantly I started thinking of NDAA. And I'm thinking, well, this isn't going to go well because I know there's a lot of people outside this building that is not going to be happy if I disappear. But that was my worry when uh, they put me in the cages. They're not going to give me an attorney. I'm going to disappear somewhere. Yeah. Um, and so throughout the process, when the feds, when the FBI showed up, I asked them, where's my attorney? Uh, and am I under arrest? At that point, the feds did offer up, yes, you are under arrest, you will be arraigned, you will see a judge, you are facing federal time. Okay. And I was like, okay, For where's what? my attorney? Yeah. And they said, well, we don't, we, and, the, and the feds said, we don't deal with attorneys. That's not what we do. If uh, you get an attorney, that's up to the federal marshal. What were the charges? What did you do so terrible besides walking on holy federal ground? It's supposed to be, by the way, our ground, but that's another story. What well, did you I can do? tell you what I did that was so wrong. I, I mean, I can, I can tell you exactly what I did wrong. Mm -hmm. I was an American. I mean, I acted as such. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much dangerous that's in those days. That's what they didn't yeah. like. Yeah. And uh, so, meanwhile, I know I was worried about your daughter and about your wife. I mean, your daughter was carrying a rifle. Please remind me which little rifle was it. Nice little pink rifle. What rifle was that? She it was a twenty-two cricket. Oh, cute! I, I like and those. The one, that, the one you get the single shot that and you both can, of my children were. Yeah, they're very yeah, nice. Yeah, it's a single shot. Perfect. So she, I was worried about her because they may, maybe they're gonna mess with this poor little child, you know. And and the, and the, what's about your wife? She was, she was. I couldn't see it. Um, she was carrying something, or she was just doing the video camera. She was also carrying a Glock sidearm on okay. her side, and she was also carrying a, an AR-15. Perfect. is the perfect lady. And now, you have also a son. I couldn't see the son in your video. How old is he, your son? He is five, almost six, and he was, he was also carrying a cricket rifle <laughs> on his back. Uh, keep in mind, as a responsible parent, I had pulled the uh, bolts out of those weapons. Perfect. Uh, they were carrying weapons without bolts. That was, I think, one of the most important uh, days, day of the learning experience. If I had to think about a school, that would be the most important day in, at school for a child to understand when it's time to stand up for their rights. And uh, I think, think they're never gonna forget. But the point is, nobody mess with your family. They, they didn't touch your wife weapon. They, they just told her to leave. I mean, what happened with them? You One Homeland Security did try to place her under arrest. Uh, they grabbed her uh, hands and twisted them behind her back. She did break uh, free from that uh, uh, Homeland uh, Security guy mm -hmm. uh, and told him that she was not going to be arrested. She had uh, <laughs> young children on site and that she would not allow herself to be arrested. Uh, it appeared that the Homeland uh, Security 
uh, guy that was on site, the big guy yeah. that was off to my right, yeah. he appeared to be in charge. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, he told his, his officer to leave her alone, Good. that they would not be arresting her today. Today. Wow, at least he had a little bit of decency, because I tell you, at least as much as he looks like a moron, at least he has two fingers of decency to understand that she's a mother, she's not trying to hurt anybody, and she has to take care of the children. I'm glad at least they did that right for a moment. Now, what happened? You've been how many hours in this sort of a 13 by 13 special room? Four hours, five hours? How many How many hours did they pretty much kidnap you, in my opinion? Well, there was no clock, so I had to guess at the time. Uh, they actually put me in cuffs right around 8 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, they fed me lunch. I asked the guy that brought me, by the way, it was an expired lunch meal. It was a luncheon meal, and it was expired uh, by a, a couple months. Mm. Uh, when he came in and, and threw that into the cage to me, uh, I asked him what time it was, and he said, oh, somewhere around noon. And so, and I was, con I was detained for... Oh, an hour and a half, two hours after that. So I was in there five, six hours. Okay. And then what happened? I mean, did they let you go? I guess you're now home. But how, how would that happen? You were so dangerous to humanity and to the nation. I mean, why did they leave you go? Let you go? <laughs> well, they, they brought the FBI in. <clears throat> Excuse me. They brought the FBI in, and they also brought in a local uh, law enforcement officer. Mm -hmm. What law enforcement he was with, I'm not sure but it appeared by what he was, uh, just his demeanor and what he was saying, that he was like a local cop, okay. uh, not federal. Mm -hmm. And they come in together, uh, the, the federal, they showed me uh, their credentials, but they didn't in such a way I, I didn't have time really to, uh, to read. identify him by name and uh -huh. stuff. They just flash uh, it at you. They They're both just... give me, yes, basically. Yeah. And uh, they both give me a first name. Um, uh, the federal marshal, uh, I asked him for his last name, but she did give me a last name. Uh, and that has something to do with later what's coming up. But uh, uh, then they started asking me about the movement, about the political leaders, you know, what we had intended, you know, when were we going to become violent, uh, just questions like that. They, oh my God. they started playing mind games uh, with me, like they'd take my coat and they laid it outside the cage where I could see it. And uh, What? To most people, that won't mean nothing, but seeing the, when I was in Iraq, I, ha I had to deal with some CIA guys interrogating uh, uh, the enemy, and so I, I started recognizing what was happening. Wow. And uh, they take some of your personal belongings, and they set si outside the cage, and what it does is it gets you thinking about, you could be out there with it. That's your stuff. Yeah, it's a psychological... And they don't put it away or anything. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and they, that's what they did for most of the time is just try to mess with my mind. But, yeah. you know, I seen what was happening, and I did play along a little bit. I said, hey, can you pick my coat up and hang it up? You're walking on my coat. And he goes, oh, we don't deal with that, as they continue to walk on my coat laying on the floor. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was a nice dress jacket. And then uh, at one point they come in and they took my belt and laid it outside the cage so I could look at it. Wow. And then a little bit later they brought in my driver's license, and they laid it on top of the coat so I could look at it. Uh, and then when they come in, they would mention stuff like uh, federal uh, offenses, you know, prison, uh, you know, long-term prison sentences, oh my God. that kind of stuff. And then they would ask more questions about, you know, leadership within the movement, uh, you know, who who's all on your te team, that kind of stuff. Oh and then they were, uh, then the FBI guy got real friendly, and you know, he's like, you know, I don't understand the Constitution like you do. You know, maybe we should talk about it. And I said, I'll engage in conversation with you about the Second Amendment any day of the week. So we'd talk a little bit about the Constitution. He'd try to divert the conversation over to the team again. Yeah. And I would divert it back to the Constitution, you know. Uh, and then uh, I finally got bored with them, and I, I just basically told them, all right, guys, you know, I'm done talking to you. I need to go to sleep. Uh, uh, and so I need a lawyer. And they said, well, uh, uh -huh. uh, we can't help you with that. And I was like, well, I'm not talking until I get a lawyer. And so they sat there for a while waiting for me to uh, talk to them. Yeah. And I just laid down and, and was going to go to sleep and everything. Uh, and so they finally left. And then throughout the, the rest of the day, the federal marshal, the, the little guy, kept coming in and he kept making these comments, you know, some friendly advice. Uh, you know, if uh, you just drop this and you quit, good possibility if you do it for a year, this will all go away and be nothing. You know, there won't be any charges. You know, but you just need to quit for a year. You need to be a good slave. And, uh, for a, they want you pretty much, they want to show an example that 
The moment that you put your head down and you are a good slave, they will let you go. And the point that they, they know, yeah. they knew, if they had something on you, they would have even told you that. They would have just slammed you on the ground and say, you're under arrest and that's over. And you got charges and you will see the judge to be arraigned maybe the next day or whatever. They knew they had nothing on you. And this is pure intimidation. This is pure, like, no, even the mafia does that. I mean, for God's sake, the mafia got more, more, more ethic. At least they used to have some morals in, in their own evil way, okay? These are cowards snakes I, mean, I don't even know you know did you need to wash your hands after you touch them for a few seconds because they're so sleazy i mean this is disgusting and i tell you what you're telling well, me this is how this is our people they work for this us is how sleazy they get my god go ahead uh, people need to understand people need to understand when they're trying to be nice they're not really trying to be nice uh one of the things they tried playing with me is they come in and they uh, said oh we just wanted you to know that for now your wife is safe Wow. I know my wife and children are outside the, oh, the, the building, and they were telling me that my wife was safe right now, you know, that nothing's happening to her, that you, she's still with the kids. And they were like, uh, and uh, um, we're sure that your other kids are safe at home. Well, that there tells me that, that they're already digging. They already know, uh, you know who I am. Mm -hmm. They already know that I have three more children, wow. and they're at home, you know, and they're older. You know, the oldest is 16, and... You know, the other two was with the 16-year-old. And so they said, so how many kids do you have? Well, when they just said that, you know, they knew that I, my other three kids were at home, they know how many kids I have. Yeah. And they're just basically poking me with how what they know about my family, and they know the locations of my family members, uh, doing that kind of stuff. But if you hear in a recording, it sounds like they're just being nice, letting me know that my children and my wife are safe. And by all means, that is not what they're doing. Oh, that's a veiled threat. And even, even a former immigrant like myself, they know the term, it's called good cops, bad cops. And even when they were trying to do the good cops, they were just lazy bastards, trying to send you a message. Because I would have asked, yeah, my wife is safe. Now, what do you mean? What's going to happen to her? Bastard. I mean, this is so sad. This is so disgusting. They know that you are a law-abiding citizen. They know that you are not a threat. They know that you've done nothing wrong. On top, you're a veteran, for God's sake. They treat you like, you no. Know, even I think if they, if they had to find some real person that is trying to commit a real crime in the Middle East or wherever they're from, we know, by the way, it's a scam. They're setting us up against them. They're creating them. But that's another story, another show. What I'm telling you, you, they know very well that you are a good person. They knew it. They have nothing against you. They need to create things. And they're trying to intimidate you to even take your children and trying to somehow use your wife as some sort of a blackmail. This is disgusting. And that's why I want you today on the show, because I want to post this show on YouTube, beside on the radio and on Guerrilla Media Network. I want everybody who's going to listen to the show in the next few weeks or few days or few months. doesn't matter. This is time to show that people like Anthony and his family, they are not alone. And if they want to do, they think they can boss around somebody like him just because they think they got him on the corner and he's alone. We show him that it's millions of us. And I say millions. I live in Arizona, for God's sake. I'm ready to jump in the car and to do the next walk around the freaking public property that we pay with our tax dollar. Every brick, every stone that these fat asses, they walk over it. They need to ask us permission because we paid for that, for that building. We paid for that parking lot or whatever it is, that area. And they need to remember that even their salary comes from us. So if somebody has decide who has the guns, maybe we should tell them if they can carry a gun or not. And according to the basic safety rules that you just told me, I think that many of them, my opinion, they should be probably sent back to school. Okay? Now, sorry, I'm getting kind of vented. Well, this will make you happy, Luca. Tell this me. will make you real happy. Go ahead. We're not done. When the, the last thing I said to them before they kicked me out the building, before we go back here and uh, finish this up here, mm -hmm. but the last thing they said to me, is please consider just quitting and going away. Just quit. And I turned and looked at him as calmly as I could, yeah. and I said, boys, I'm just getting started. Good. Well, I'm telling you now, Luca, within the next two weeks, we're going back to that federal building, and this time we're going back in high numbers, and we're all being armed. Excellent. We're Excellent. going to go back, and we're going to stand on those federal grounds and say, Federal ground belongs to the people of the United States. This is our ground, not yours. Please keep me posted. You know, I've never so, been in Washington State. Maybe this is going to be the time I'm going to go north for a few days because this is so important, so well, important. Now, you're, you're more than welcome. Listen to me. So, uh, listen. 
Go ahead, finish up because Go I ahead. want to know the end of the story. You get back home, everybody's home, you're having dinner with your family, pray the Lord and praise the Lord, and the day was over, right? Uh, well, no, we ended up filling phone calls and everything else. I mean, uh, we have state representatives involved. Good. Uh, let me tell you this here, Luca. Yes. Uh, while I was in there, about hour five, about an hour, hour and a half before it was all over, I noticed an automatic change in their demeanor. Uh, it wasn't a game so much anymore. They become a lot more laid back, a lot softer in their push on me. They're still trying to push, mm -hmm. but they're being a lot more careful now. Yes. And I, I notice it, and I'm wondering, what's, what's going on outside this building right now that's got them changing? I mean, they're literally being really careful now. Yes. And uh, so I'm concerned what's going on outside the building, why they've become so uh, uh, subdued now. Mm -hmm. And when I walked out the doors, and uh, there was people there and everything, I found out why. Why? We had, a local, we had a local militia here in Washington State that worked really closely with the sheriff of that county. Yes. That militia, their commanders, contacted the sheriff and said, this is what you're going to do. You're going to go free that man now. Wow. We're giving you a chance. If you do not do it, we've got 250 armed militiamen that are willing to do it for you. Oh, my God. This is your last chance. Go the, free that man or else we're coming. What is the name of the and sheriff? The commander and the exo... What is the name of the sheriff? It's the 63rd Lightfoot, the 63rd Lightfoot Militia. Okay, and and the name of the sheriff, the sheriff of that county. What is the name of the sheriff? You know uh, that. Ozzy, Ozzy Knezevich. Okay, and the county is. Uh, Spokane County. Spokane County. Okay, uh, is that a good sheriff that you know? According to, I mean, what type of sheriff is that? Is the constitutional we, sheriff or just somebody who doesn't care, get his paycheck? He's a He's definitely a politician, definitely a politician. We've had some big issues with him mm -hmm. over the last couple of years. Uh, we had a, a MRAP rally down there because they just got uh, the MRAP, uh, the military MRAP. Yeah. And we got on film one of his officers saying that they got it to control patriots and, con and constitutionalists. I saw that. Or, excuse me. Let me retract that. I saw that, the, yes. He made the statement that uh, to control conservatives. And constitutional. Yeah, and he also ran out and of town. So that was a big blow up in his face. Yeah, and he ran out of town when the, somebody was wanted to talk to him. He just sent out his, uh, his uh, you know, his, uh, his uh, sidekick to give some answer to the media. Okay, listen, this is exciting at the same time, you know, kind of disturbing what you're saying. Because this is serious. This is real. We've been talking about the Patriot Act, the National Defense Authorization Act, the Military Commission Act, all these different things that normally we think they are just there on paper. So we are safe. No, this is happening. I mean, American people, please listen. I don't care if you're left or right. I don't care if you believe or not that uh, a free human being should have a gun. Lord Biden, see that. That's not the point. The point here, look, due process. Let's start with that. I mean, when you have a marshal or a federal agent laughing at you, when you just demand the basic, the basic constitutional, you know, protections, and this is not a constitutional right. We have inalienable, God-given rights. The constitution doesn't give us rights. It's just to constrain the freaking government. And they laugh at us now. They know. They know that there is no more protection. The National Defense Authorization Act pretty much put out of the, this, this, this cage this beast. And they smell in the blood. And this is our blood. So now all I can say is this. We must unite as Americans. We must get together. And I don't care. This is not happening to me. I, I No. Tomorrow is going to be me. Tomorrow is going to be your brother. Tomorrow is going to be your family. So we got to start to do now. Be proactive and show him that we're like a dog. When a dog's trying to nip your butt, what do you do? You kick him in the face, okay? Because you need to say, stop. Now, I'm not advocating a violence. I'm just saying, let's show him an example. We are united. We will be vocal. We will do everything to put this in the public opinion. And more important, we need to start to stand up together because that's our rights. We know that if that is public land, or at least there is no sign, and in, in Washington state, you have the right to open carry a rifle, and this man and his family wasn't doing anything wrong, there is no way that he's supposed to be intimidated, coerced in submission like a slave, and put in jail with all this bunch of garbage. Insane. Now, last 60 seconds, I want you to say if somebody can help you out. Are you planning to sue this bastard? Are you doing some, looking for an attorney? If we can, whatever we can do here in Arizona, tell us. Well, we definitely are looking at uh, uh, fighting the, 
the citation for uh, failure to comply. That's what they dropped everything to at this point. They did make it clear that they're holding federal charges until they, the state attorney's office figures out what they can and can't do. Failure to comply. Uh, you comply. So we, we, you com yeah. you comply. Yeah, that's I mean, what they got me for. Is. Wow. So you need you need some attorney so to help I, you out. You need an attorney to help you out in in Washington State. So uh, are you already contacting somebody? I mean, I'm sure this is gonna get a lot of media thing, media attention. I mean, I already see your video has got over almost twelve thousand uh, views right now. Okay, and this is just a day after. And I hope a good attorney pro bono, a, a patriot wants to understand that we need to defend our rights right now. I hope he can help you out pro bono, for starter, okay? I mean, that would be something nice. And more important, my opinion, I would like to sue these bastards. I don't know how, I don't know on which ground, because probably right now with the new laws between the National Defense Authorization Act and the Patriot Act, pretty much they tell us they can do whatever they want to us legally, and even torture you. I don't know, but I will still try because I hope we can get a jury maybe. Maybe we can start to, you know, really make pay some of these people. Listen, I want to say, first of all, thank you to your wife. Thank to you, to you, to your kids, to standing together, and uh, this is for me exactly the America that I came for when I left Italy over 16, 17 years ago, because we are not slaves. We are human beings, and more important, we have rights. This is the only country in the world where we, our forefathers, fought and died to give us these unalienable rights. That pretty much nowhere in the world you can do things like that. And the moment that we stop doing them. We pretty much give the idea to these wannabe kings and lords and, and, you know, just evil people, by the way, because for me, these people that they know the constitution, they know what's going on. They know you are a good person. They can see your record in five seconds. If you had anything on your record, if you had any type of felony or whatever, they would have shot you, shoot you first and then talk later. They knew that you were just doing. Exactly. Okay. Just exercising your and rights. That's it. They say, guys, can we talk? And that's it. And move on. You know, that's it. No, they knew. And, and, they're, and they're cowards, because when they see a real criminal, they coward. When they see a good person that they know that is not going to do anything wrong, they come at you like a pack of coyotes, and they think they can pretty much show his boss. That's why I'm so disgusted with them, seriously. I give you the floor. Last well, Luke, whatever you want to say, go ahead. Let, let me say this. That's the great thing about America, is the Constitution, no matter who you are, where you're from and what you have done, the Constitution does one thing. It unites us all. Exactly. It's one thing in common no matter who we are. As Americans, that piece of paper is a, is a paper of un, uh, to unite every one of us under the same protections. And that's the great thing about it. Exactly. And we got to fight back together, my friend. I never met you. Maybe I don't know if I'll ever meet you, but I consider you and your family. I consider you part of my family. And my prayers, first of all, are all with you. And more important, you know that uh, we are just a few hours away by car. Okay, I don't, draw, I don't fly anymore because I don't want to be arrested by, to, 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 to defend myself against sex offender at TSA. But that's another story. What I'm saying is, you know, let's see now what they're going to do. I'm sure you have a lot of good people around the area that they're understanding and they need to start to stand up around you. Try to understand, show them to these evil people that you are not alone. At the same time, like happened with the Bundys, this cowers subhuman species of excrement, okay, they need to understand that there is a lot of big part of this country that is watching what's happening right now there. And we are peaceful, but at the same time, we will not tolerate violent acts, unconstitutional acts, and more important, tyranny. You pawn a law-abiding citizen, you pawn a veteran, you pawn a family that's done nothing wrong, but just try to exercise the basic human rights. So we are watching, we are here, and my prayers for you and for Maria, Anthony, and uh, please be in touch. And, uh, you know, you got my email. Uh, we are, by the way, you're on Facebook. I would like to say everybody's listening to the show. I will post on today's show also on lovegunsfreedom.com the link for Anthony Facebook. So you can uh, maybe say hi to him and be in touch with him. And let's see what's going on. That's what I'm saying. Okay, Anthony? Thank you, Luca. Thank and, you. Uh, you know, thanks for the prayers, and uh, God be with you also, and protect you also. Thank you, my friend. Let's be in touch, and you're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom. Don't go away, because we have the final hour, some more interesting, exciting news, and it's time to stand up. And more important, it's time to show them that we are not afraid 
of any of this. At the end of the day, we're going to be afraid only when pretty much, you know, the regrets of the things we didn't do when we had a chance. That's the only thing I'm afraid of. Thank you, Anthony. My best to your lady and your family, okay? Thank you again. Bye-bye. And that was Anthony. Anthony, Anthony, Anthony. I have no words. Anthony Bosworth and his, his wife, Maria. You heard the story. I invite you to watch the video on uh, lovegunsfreedom.com, today's show, the short YouTube, to show the arrest, to show the dynamics, and then listen to his story. Is this the America that pretty much our forefathers fought and died for? I mean, listen, now, I don't care if you really believe or not about the Second Amendment. That's your personal opinion. You can keep it. That's fine. But think about it. Tomorrow, let's say if you were doing like a peace rally or you're protesting about Bush or something else and they arrest you without any type of reason and you ask for a lawyer and they laugh at you and they pretty much detain you with not really any charges. I mean, come on, guys. Stop playing this left and right stuff. The National Defense Authorization Act was passed with Congress, with the Senate, and Obama. All of them, they're responsible. And this time was the Democrat Party. But before was Bush with the Republicans. So they're all equally evil. Please wake up. Okay, don't go away. Let me get a coffee here because I'm getting stressed out. And uh, be ready for the next hour, final hour, love, guns, and freedom. And all I can say, God help us. And more important, we have to do our part. Stay tuned. Have you ever met someone on an online dating site and thought, wow, this guy is perfect for me, or she is simply amazing, only to find out they were hiding a deep, dark secret? They plan to vote for Hillary. Freedomlovers.us was created for singles who want to exchange ideas and a love for freedom. People who are looking for solutions to create and defend freedom in the real world. And at the same time, getting that once in a lifetime chance to find their true soulmate. Whether you are interested in meeting your soulmate, making new friends, networking, or hanging out with that like-minded liberty lover, visit freedomlovers.us. It's the first free dating site and community. So patriots, don't waste your time with other dating sites. FreedomLovers.us is the place where like-minded singles really click.